It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Canada Bobsledder Olympian, Don Richardson Wilson. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into the sport of bobsledding? I can honestly say I didn't know that I wanted to get into the sport until I was actually in the sport. So it was more of like a spur of the moment decision for sure. Of course, what was it like playing rugby and track and field? I didn't really play rugby for too long. It was more of like a short-lived passion. But I recently got into like the sport of track and field because I just love everything that it stands for. The running, the jumping, the very versatile training. So... Of course, how did track and field, rugby, and fr- ultimate frisbee help you into the athlete that you are for bobsledding? Ultimate frisbee was more so a like recreational thing that just kept me active while I was trying to figure out the direction I wanted to take. But I do think like rugby as well as basketball, weightlifting, and track and field just all have very similar strengths and skills that benefit in the sport of bobsleigh so they all complemented each other in oh sorry there's a fly (laughs) complemented each other in helping me become the person I am today of course how is it like obviously joining the bobsledding team and getting to represent team Canada I get goosebumps every time I like think about it just because If you asked me a few years ago, I wouldn't have imagined I'd be in this position, but it's just a surreal experience, and I'm so happy, like, I get to do that and still get to do it. Yeah. How is it like, obviously, competing in your first tournament in the World Championship in 2019 in Lake Placid? It was nerve-wracking. There's a lot of expectation, especially... um, at that age, I was I'm st- I was still 19 at the time, and just like being around so, like very mature and experienced athletes, really put me in my place. Really opened my mind to like, okay, if I'm gonna pursue this sport, I'm gonna have to work my butt off to be just as experienced and as good as them. Of course, as you talked about being so young, how has that helped you in being young and learning from those older? people that have done the sport, such as Alyssa Rylands? I would say being young really benefited me in the sense of it allowed me to really start from the bottom and be molded into a bobsleigh athlete instead of, you know, coming in with pre-existing knowledge and having, uh, like, like, yeah pre-existing knowledge and just trying to maneuver the sport but like coming in young allowed me to just be open to all the new experiences and ideas and skills and training needed to do with this sport of course how is it like obviously learning at under the pilot Alyssa Rislin during the world championship She's a great person, great mentor, great teammate, great, just very patient in her teachings and as well as just encouraging. So just having that experience with her made me feel more comfortable in the decision I made to pursue this sport and know that I'm going to be doing great things in the future. What was it like, obviously, traveling to Lake Placid and competing in the North American Cup? It was 
honestly, the whole process of Bob's Day have, have just been amazing for me because it's, once again, being so young, it was just a new experience and just another step in our direction towards being a professional athlete. Of course, what is the training like preparing for when you did make that first run for the Olympics? The training was more so mental than it was physical, really trying to set my mind in the right spot and really trying to, you know, calm my energy and calm my nerves and calm all these emotions behind the games and just like, remember, I've been doing this for so long. Just continue. Like, you've done the reps. You've put in the time. Just go and execute. So it was really more so mental than physical. Of course, how did it feel when you did make that Olympic team in 2021 and then you got to compete in 2022? I was, I screamed, first of all. I When the news came out, I just couldn't stop smiling, couldn't stop screaming, just filled with excitement. And I think that excitement just carried through all throughout the games and even closing and opening ceremony, I just had the biggest smile underneath the mask so of course what was that training like obviously for the olympics after making the team and having a year to prepare Uh, the training was very much the same as the past few years before leading into the games it's just more so fine-tuning and making like small adjustments in order to replicate them for four consistent runs. How was the feeling like receiving your Olympic year and seeing the maple leaf flag and the Olympic rings both on your jersey? I love it. I wear it so often that it's probably the only wardrobe like in my closet that I consistently just like grab on a day-to-day basis. Of course, what was that feeling like getting into the bobsled at Beijing? It, because we had already attended a training uh, camp in Beijing at the start of our season, it wasn't exactly anything different, just with logos all around and just um, more pressure around it, but it having that familiarity uh, from the first training camp made going to the games a lot easier. What were some of your game day routines and rituals like in the Olympic Village? Wake up, get ready, eat. And because we got there super early, like we got there right when the village opened, we had a lot of time to just settle in and look around and just like taking the full experience before dialing in and being ready to compete. So it was pretty much just like a day-to-day routine for me. Of course, being a first-time Olympian, were th- going into the Olympics, were there anybody you consulted in to figure out what the Olympics is like? I have a lot of mature and experienced teammates, so they definitely guided me throughout this whole journey. and. I'm very grateful for, you know, being able to have people willing to take me underneath their wings and just show me the ropes. Of course, when you got to Beijing and it finally hit, what was that feeling like seeing the Olympic rings in front of you and knowing that all your hard work paid off? It, it, it's very hard to describe. I just felt a feeling of, like a flashback of all the memories and the steps I took to get to this place. So that's, it was, I really can't put it into words, but it was just amazing. Of course, how did it feel to now have Olympian behind your last name and add O-L-Y behind your last name? For me... It doesn't change anything. I think I'm still the same person I was before going to the games and even afterwards. So it's just another you know, another thing to be proud of and accomplishment. 
How did it feel to obviously get to represent the Maple Leaf flag and have that on your jersey and obviously your clothing? It's a dream come true. I would always watch them the telly and just see these great athletes go on to like competing on the world stage and being being now able to be one of those great athletes is just another dream come true. Of course, at Beijing, what was it like competing and did you obviously compete good at Beijing? I think for the first time experience, me and my pilot competed very well. We, at least to me, I exceeded all expectations that I had going into it. And so I'm very happy with how the results turned out. For my listeners that don't know about bobsledding, can you explain what bobsledding is and how do you compete in the sport? That is a good question. <laughs> um, I would say bobsledding is, to put it into words, or like to simplify it, would be just a team team sport and everybody's working towards a common goal and that common goal looks like getting to a sled pushing as fast as you can getting in and then the pilot from there on out will at high at high pace and high speeds maneuver it down the track and the the goal is to have the fastest downtime and that's how you basically win by having the fastest downtime downtime consistently of course, what is that? Get into it. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. What is that <laughs> feeling? What is that feeling like going and pushing the sled and getting into it and going at a fast pace? It's a lot of like excitement and just like energy and just rush behind it because you're literally giving all your training and all your hard work into this one object and to be able to move an object at that weight um, super fast is just amazing at what the human body is capable of and yeah it's just it's just a rush. Of course how has the transition been like coming back from Beijing and what are some of the things that you do to prepare for your next run and in your life? The, I would say the transition coming back from Beijing is just finding the time to sit down with your thoughts and just embrace the experience you went through and just trying to reconnect with family members and try foods that you've tried at home and just, you know, get re- uh, re instated back into like community and the you know with the folks who helped you along your journey what is that feeling like getting to meet your fans and having them obviously ask for your autographs and photos with you i didn't think i would be ever in that position that somebody would be asked for my autograph but it, it's i feel very honored that people are starting to look up to me and starting to you know, want to follow my footsteps. So I'm very like grateful that I've made an impact in so many people's lives. Of course, what was that feeling like the first time coming back from Beijing and being an Olympian and signing your autograph and adding OLY after your autograph? It it took a lot of time getting used to because I myself still wasn't used to, you know, just having that title yet. So it, as I was signing, I was pretty much like, oh my gosh, like, I'm actually, I actually did it. Like, I'm actually writing this. Like, it was very much still something I'm still getting accustomed to. Who are some of the people that you look up to in the sport of bobsledding? Uh, uh, it's hard to pick from 
a few people, but definitely everybody has played a role in me becoming who I am today from my first pilots that I've ever slid with to the current people in the team. So it's very hard to like select just one because I know all of them have played a role in my journey. Who are some of the most influential people in your career that have shaped you into the bobsledder you are? I would say first and foremost would be my mom, followed by close family and friends, as well as just the coaches who believed in me and continue to push me to this direction. Of course, what is it like obviously competing against some of those teams like Team USA and Australia and different countries? It's amazing because it just... It's, it's what competing on a world stage is, being able to really see the talents and the hard work from those other countries and realize that you guys, despite being in different places, are still working towards the same path. Of course, in the village, what was it like getting to see those people that you looked up to and even maybe saw growing up on TV? I uh, try to act cool you know just I was a girl but deep inside I was like oh my god so that that was the feeling every time I'd like meet somebody that I knew I was just like trying to hide my smile and then just like politely waving and then running off to go tell my other teammates who I just saw of course were there anybody that you grew up watching that you definitely saw in the village that you were like oh my god I met them for the first time not necessarily I think once I was in the sport like in the winter sport I kind of got more used to the people around me but I would say Growing up, I haven't really watched a lot of winter sports, and that's why Bob says so unique to me because it introduced me to that new experience, a new realm that I wasn't really familiar with. Of course, coming back home, what was it like receiving your ring and seeing the Olympic rings and the Camp Canada Maple Leaf flag on it? Say it again, sorry. Of course, coming back home, what was it like receiving your rings and getting to put on the ring and seeing the Canada Maple Leaf flag and the Olympic rings both on the ring? It's, 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 it's a beautiful, um, It's, it's a beautiful representation of everything that led to that moment. So just looking at it, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to touch it. I just like want to look at it and keep it like in the box and just look and just feel all that like experience and everything that went that I went through in that one object. Of course, what are some of your favorite memories competing in bobsledding, obviously, besides going to the Olympics? Just the friends and the culture, the friends that I've made along the way, as well as the culture I got to, the many cultures I got to experience, which, like, not many people get to travel as often as we did, and like just being able to go to these places I've never would have gone to on my own was just amazing. Of course, what are some of the things that you're doing now as you're preparing for the next run to the Olympics? Taking the time to prioritize my body and give it the rest that it needs to be able to take another go. Because I think so many times we focus on what's next, what next, that we don't get to realize the importance of slowing down and just taking in where we are at this moment. Of course, how are you balancing, obviously, being an Olympian and also having a life outside of the sport of bobsledding and being an Olympian? I don't think for, for myself anyway, there's 
too much description between the two. I think my life and this sport is very much so intertwined that these are my family and they moving forward will always be my family. So, yeah. What advice would you give those people that are looking to go into the sport of pop sledding? I would say what are the advice I would give is trust in your abilities. And if you have the passion as well as the, you know, you have the passion as well as just like the motivation to learn and like really just put yourself out there out of your comfort zone, then for sure, give it a shot. Don't hold back. Of course, what advice would you give those athletes such as yourself that went from being a track and field athlete to getting into a completely new sport such as bobsledding? I will say for me, my, my, I guess throughout this whole journey, the thing that I've been seeing that kept me through, like kept me going was just trust the process, even though it might be difficult, slow, or at times frustrating, it's definitely going to put you in the right direction, point you in the right direction, and that'll be maybe in the spot that I am now. Of course, what are some of your future plans in the sport of bobsledding? I'd say my future plans is to go to another games as well as continue to introduce younger athletes to the sport of Bob's and continue to develop and grow the sport into something more well known as like especially in Canada. Of course, what advice would you give those people such as yourself that were first time Olympians and experiencing this journey going to the Olympics? Take lots of photos, embrace it live in the moment, and don't be afraid to ask questions along the way. What advice would you give those people that are looking to represent their national team or even their country, such as Team Canada or Team USA? My advice would be, as long as you're giving it your all, whatever the result may be, we're always going to be there to support you and just continue to help you in the right direction as well as just be your backbone that's great advice where can my listeners find you at on social media i have facebook you can find me on my facebook athlete page as well as i'm more active on instagram at just dot or just underscore dot 98 but besides that, you can just search me up. And if you have any questions about the sport or anything, feel free to reach out. Thank you again, Don Richardson Wilson, for your interview. And best of luck in your future as you continue this journey as Canada's bobsledding. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk. Twitter at talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Don Richardson Wilson, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. Bye. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.